for three or four years. So. Really? Awesome. But New York's home. Oh, yeah. Where did you go to school up until you were 10? Where did you go to school? Up, up in... Up at, like, before you moved to New Rochelle? Oh, I, I went to two different schools. I went to PS93 and what was then called Miss Hewitt's classes. It's now called the Hewitt School. Oh, yes, I'm familiar. <laughs> How about you? I went to Ethical uh -huh. Culture School. And My mother went Fieldston. there. Yeah. Your, really? Yeah, I still have her ring. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. My my stepmother went there as well, so oh. it's fun. It's nice to see the whole right. lineage of it and the history of that school. I always find that people uh, growing up in the city, you know, and then coming back, it's like I don't know. There was something that looking. I'm not. It's fine. But there was something about looking around this apartment that made me think that you grew up in the city. Oh, that's funny. You know, I don't know. There's a there's a feel about it. I guess. Well, I started out writing about art. That's why there's just a lot of art and stuff. Your art is amazing. <laughs> and my kids all went to Dalton. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, can you can you tell me a little bit about the Penn Award and the Penn Gallery? I just want to get a little comfy here. Sure. All right. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, the Penn Barbara Goldsmith Award was started over 20 years ago. And the reason I started it was that I was working very hard for Penn, and we would see these people all over the world in terrible condition. They were disappearing. They were being tortured, they were in jail, and we would try very hard to get them out. We'd write letters, we'd call ambassadors, and we had some success. But then I got the idea that the media gets a very bad rap sometimes, and if we could turn a spotlight on these people, then maybe the governments would back off. So I started the Barbara Goldsmith Award for Penn, and it worked like a dream. Uh, we have, as you know, 120, 146 branches. Used to be 126, now it's 146. And um, all of these people would write about it, get their newspapers to write about it, and we have now given many awards, but of the 32 awards we've given of people who were imprisoned or had disappeared, well, 30 of them have gotten out, and usually within four months. So we have had the most phenomenal success record. It's, it's beautiful because it's a call to action to get people aware of these scenarios because before, for example, I came on to work on this, I had never heard of this, never heard of this man, Yang, and, and you know, the fact that the freedom of speech is so quelled in China that, he, that by possibly speaking out against the government that he was thrown in jail for that, and what the award does by bringing it to light. Yang Tongyan is only one of over a thousand cases we deal with. I would like to give Penn Barbara Goldsmith awards to all of them, but he is symbolic of those cases. And we try to pick people who are in dire straits. And this person is in very dire straits because a lot of people think, oh, things are fine with China, we're going to have the Olympics. But he was one of over 30 people who were arrested simply by putting his opinions on the internet. And he was totally stifled. Something as simple as wanting to give an award dinner was broken up, the hotel was canceled by the government, guards were posted in front of the houses of the awardees. It's a very bad situation. And here is someone, this isn't the first time. He was just sentenced for 12 years. But before that, he served 10 years, he got out. He served another year, he got out. He served another year, 
he got out. So this is a man who has such incredible faith in trying to promote democracy. And he was instrumental in founding a Penn branch, an independent China branch of Penn, with 200 writers who were so courageous in order to try to promote democracy. And they knew what would happen if they did this. And they did it anyway. There's something within a person that will go ahead and take a risk like that, even though they may know what the consequences are. Certainly after spending all those years in prison, he knew what the risks were. And um, he went right ahead and did it anyway. People believe in change enough that they're going to do that is amazing. Um, well, they don't believe as much that they can accomplish something as their conscience tells them they must do it. And they hope they can accomplish something. And the Penn Barbara Goldsmith Award hoped it could accomplish something, and it has. <laughs> Um, tell me a little bit more how the award has impacted on lives. Oh, it's the difference between life and death. We are really saving lives. These thousand writers have no voice. We're coming into a period where we're celebrating world voices. Writers from all over the world are coming to show how wonderful they are, to have dialogues, to show their brilliance. These are the writers who have no voice. They're the silent people. And we are their voice. And it impacts tremendously. Um, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind uh, reading a little bit of his poetry. I'll be glad to read it off camera. Yeah, off camera. Yeah. I have some translated by a Chinese friend of mine because she didn't like the translations that oh, were really? sent. Okay, that's But I, I spoke to Larry, and I think it may be a bit redundant. Um, no, because I mean, I would choose either his or yours to you, so I would like to have both. Oh, okay, I'll give you mine. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, redundant as in. Oh, I see. Because I had him read it. Oh, I see. But I'd also like to have you read it, to have it, your voice be told it, perhaps so I can choose. Maybe you can intercut. Right, exactly. Yeah. Would okay. you read the, uh, do you have the spiritual tours over land of China? This yeah. is the one I had translated. Okay. <clears throat> High walls, insensitive and indifferent, electric fences across the sky cut off my viewing of rivers, green willows, and grain in the spring fields. But the bright moon refuses to be manipulated or monopolized by offering its light of affection equally to all people all over the world. The electric fence and high wall quietly guarded against all around the wilderness, far mountain, and cloudy sky. In a prisoner's heart, those constant universes lie. Beautiful. It is a totally different translation. I like the one that you have better. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's a prisoner's translation. Yeah. Uh, high walls and electric fences. He spent his life behind high walls and electric fences, and yet he finds that the light of affection is equally upon all people of the world. These are very brave people. Um, can you tell me a bit about the climate of China, the, the state of China, and basically the government there? The government is very repressive as you can see by the 30 some odd writers they've arrested. And we at Penn are now starting a campaign to try to see that at the time of the Olympics, the number of these prisoners is zero. And we hope that we will have some success. 
it's a very bad situation. And it seems almost absolutely unnecessary for a country that has come up so and is so powerful not to let their people speak out. Um, it's interesting uh, that the, it's a lot in the issue of the internet and blogging that now this, this way of speech becomes so vastly viral that it goes out so fast that it's difficult to control. And I think it's true that the government has a large part of trying to control the things that are said. And now with the internet, I imagine the things are, it's almost like they're chasing, you know? Well, the internet is a very powerful tool. In the old days, our prisoners smuggled out manuscripts, smuggled out letters, smuggled out notes. I've been at this for over 20 years. But now, the internet is this powerful tool. It's also a powerful tool for helping these people. If you go into the Penn Barbara Goldsmith site, you'll see all the things that you can do and all the prisoners that have been released, among them people who've gone on to win the Nobel Prize and such things. That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I just want to stress the point that Penn has wonderful voices in these 146 countries but these are the silent voices. These are the people who have been stifled, and it's an obligation of Penn to give them a voice. And also, I was instrumental in starting a core freedoms program here in America, and we have a wonderful First Amendment award in the name of Catherine Ann Porter, and that again, is so that people here at home can speak their opinions and know that like people all over the world are behind them. Freedom of speech is, is so important that we don't even think about it that much here because it's so freely given to us. There is repression in this country, particularly under this administration, but we do have safeguards in our Constitution. We have an amendment that protects us, and we cling to that, and the public would never stand for these kind of Chinese repressions. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be really nice. Um, can you can you say one thing before we leave? Um, can you talk a bit about what the Penn American Center stands for and how it started? A bit of the history of it. Um, it's in. Well, I think you're better off getting that from Larry. Okay. Uh, it was in last year's. Oh, wow. uh, video, and it really was to foster relationships between writers the world over, companionship, fellowship, and it has developed into the premier human rights organization for writers the world over. And the Penn Barbara Goldsmith Award has a wonderful advisory board made up of some of the most involved people in human rights. And we rely on them to help us pick the prize winner, who is only symbolic of the thousand cases with which we deal. Right, because he's, he's still in jail, and, and, and you have his um, lawyer coming to represent him. His lawyer was disbarred for representing him, 
And now we have our fingers crossed that he'll be with us tonight because he needs a visa. And so far, when you're shooting this film, we don't know if he has a visa or not. But we hope he will be with us tonight. Great. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you for taking the time to do this. Okay. Thank you. you asked me if I wanted to say one other oh, thing. Should I do that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I just wanted to say that pen freedom to write, I've always said, is the heart of pen. Because we have many programs, but this program actually saves lives. It is so important. And when you think about these people who know what terrible things can happen and are still advocates of freedom, you have to go to bat for them. And every year I say to the press and to people gathered in this room, keep the spotlight on because that's what secures their freedom. Great. I remember Larry said that he wanted you to talk about that. What? Keep the spotlight on. I always say that. <laughs> okay. It's very important. We live in such a jangly age that there's a lot of competition for space. I mean, one day the front page has the Pope, and the next day it's got Britney Spears. So we have to think about what's really important. This is really important. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>